Welcome to the final episode of our Subaru engine build series, presented by Valvoline. In this one, Nam's going to finish assembling the long block. If you guys watched the last episode, you'll know that Nam from NV Auto has bolted on the cylinder heads, installed the camshafts, we've put our Killer B oil pan in place, so now it's time to install the valve covers. The valve covers, yep, and then we'll start doing everything else in the car slowly. Okay, so I guess before the valve covers go on, we need to install these half moons or cylinder head plugs as they're called. We got these uh, aluminum 6061 units from Lick Motorsports. And being aluminum, they'll never crack or shrink or degrade the way the plastic ones can. So these are good for the lifetime of your Subaru engine. It might in fact be the only thing that's good for the lifetime on a Subaru engine. These are not the... Uh... Probably the only thing. <laughs> Although these 207 engines, everyone says they're bulletproof. So we're going to put that to the test as soon as it's assembled. All right, Nam, what do you got to do to put those in the hole? So we're going to put some sealer in between the grooves here, and then we're going to also assemble the uh, valve covers at the same time. All right. torque this down to a magical nine, nine foot, pounds. foot pounds. All right. So with that down, what's next? Uh, spark plugs? So while we're here, we're going to put the spark plugs in on this side and then we're going to put the cam seals on this side. And then once that's done, we go to the other side, do the same thing. All right, Nam is ready to put in the spark plugs and you're going with an NGK. What, uh, what's this, what's the rating on this thing? Uh, these are the BKR 70s. This is what we run in pretty much all of our, uh, you know, NV Auto built setups with these two of seven heads. Okay. Uh, and we've got nothing but uh, great success with them. Time for the cam seals. Yeah, we're gonna use Subaru OEM cam seals. And on this side for the exhaust, uh, we'll apply a little bit of assembly lube to the seal. Is that just to help it sort of uh, slide in its home? Yeah, that just helps it uh, slide in because it's gonna be riding up against this cam shaft. So just lay it in there. Use the Subaru factory tool. And you drive it home. With this factory tool, it actually stops the cam seal from going any further once it uh, hits the lip here. So it's perfect. You can't uh, push it in too far. You can't push it too far. Beauty. And you push it just enough. All right, so now we've got the valve covers on. We're gonna start installing some of the little stuff like the wrist pin covers, uh, the dipsticks, some of the pipes and the uh, coolant uh, hoses up top. And then we'll get into like the timing cover stuff. So next we'll install the oil pump and we've installed the uh, brand new crank seal in the front here and applied some sealer sealant in the back here uh, and once we've put a dab of sealant in the block here where it's going to hold the o-ring 
I'm just going to hold the O-ring in, in place right before we put the uh, oil pump in. We'll apply some assembly lube to the inside of this crank seal. You got to make sure that the oil pump is lined up with the flat spots on the side in order for it to slide into the crank. So now we'll install the water pump in the water pump gasket. We'll get our little guides here. With that wrapped up, it's time to move on to the timing system. And rather than showing you that whole thing in detail, we've got a video which we'll put a link up here for where Nam does a step-by-step -step timing setup on another motor. And in the meantime, I think we'll just let Nam do his thing here and we'll get out of the way. timing system is, is in place here and we use a nice little trick to line up the belts. It's uh, LSE Motorsports offset idler pulleys. Can you explain to me how these work? They're great for uh, heads that have been either decked too many times or engines that have been decked as well. Uh, so they take up the excessive slack in the belt uh, by adjusting what offset, you know, what where you want it. So this just basically lets you line the belt up properly with some adjustability of the idlers. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, so what's up next? Uh, so we're going to put the covers on, and then we're going to do the intake manifold and the fuel rails and all that stuff. Time to install the crank pulley, and our options are this rusty 5.2 pound OEM one, or this very nice red 1.2 pound one from Perrin. Four pounds lighter, rotating mass being what it is, this should really help with throttle response, and although the OEM one does have some rubber dampening in it, the crankshaft's so short on these motors, apparently they run very stable, very smoothly, so a non dampered pulley I think shouldn't cause us any problems and we like lightness. In fact, we're going to put a really light flywheel on this motor too. So, so Nam, uh, I guess this has got the usual uh, keyway yeah, on it. It's got the keyway, so we just got to line it up to the keyway on the crank. And then we'll torque this down when the flywheel is on. It's time to install the intake manifold. Before we do that, we actually need to install the TGVs or TGV deletes in our case. So these are the factory TGVs, which is a tumbler what valve? Tumbler generator valve. Tumbler generator valve. And these are both potential restriction points. It's basically like a choke, isn't it? It's for cold yeah. startup, emissions related? Emission related. And uh, guys like to replace these with this valve deleted, like these ones from Torque Solution, which you can see is a very nice built aluminum piece with no valve inside. So this will give you better airflow and potentially pick up some power on the street and the dyno. And more importantly, I think we're also deleting a potential failure point or a service point. Nan was telling us earlier that these are, at least in the older models, are really difficult to service because they're they're tucked in next to the turbo. And it's, yeah, it's they, have their own, they have a lot of issues. I mean, even the newer ones, they'll have a uh, leak coming through the sides. There's really only a like a little O-ring in here. Mm -hmm. And that, you'll, sometimes you get a bit of a boost leak coming out of there. These motor and the sensors in here fail all the time. These can get either jammed open, jammed closed. So we are going to delete these. And normally that would throw a bunch of check, check engine lights, but we're going to get around that with our Cobb access port V3. You'll see this in action when we actually put this motor in a car and do some tuning. But this will let us shut off any kind of like check engine lights that we get from all this stuff and custom tune this motor because it's going to need some custom tuning with all this good stuff yeah, on it. It'll make some power. Well, Nam's bolting that one down. I should say thank you for ordering these for us, by the way, through Turn 14 Distribution, where you were able to get them in a day or two for us. So uh, once again, we forgot one part. Every time we build something, we forget one part. But thanks to Turn 14's quick delivery and NV Auto's account with them, we got these quick. And I'm pretty sure the install is going to be pretty quick and simple on these, too. It's, what, four bolts? 
on the bottom, four, four bolts on top, and we're good to go. The manifold's torqued down, and that means it's time to move on to the fuel system. And for that, we've gone to our friends at Cobb Tuning, who make a complete fuel system for this engine, including these fuel rails, an AM340 liter per hour pump, ID 1050Xs, and all the hoses in the world. These are just two of them. We got a box full of them to complete this system because it has hoses that go everywhere. So now what do we start with? I assume fuel rails? We're gonna install the injectors and the fuel rail at the same time and bolt them down and then we'll be doing the lines once the engine's in the car. And the pump too, obviously. So you guys will see the lines and the pump in a future series when we put this motor into a car that's yet to be determined. Well, it looks like this thing is pretty much ready to go back to our shop and be put in a mystery car of our choosing. There's still a few details left to do, like we could put an alternator on it and a few other odds and ends, but really it's kind of the point where it's more or less ready to go in a car, right? So we have plugged up some holes in it just so that we don't get any debris falling in the motor during transport. So next we're going to talk a little bit about oil. So let's uh, pull the oil cap off here and we will fill this for break-in purposes with Valvoline's VR1 non-synthetic racing oil. You guys like a non-synthetic for break-in. With high zinc. Yeah. With high zinc, and this is exactly what this is. Uh, Valvoline also makes a Pro-V oil, which is like their professional grade racing oil, which has even more zinc than the VR1. But it, my understanding is all the Pro-V oils are synthetic, so this is the best stuff we could get in a non-synthetic. These, by, by the way, has about, uh, in a 50 weight, as we're running here, has about uh, 1,200 parts per million of zinc, which is very high, so that'll really help with break-in. And then for daily use, for track use, we could opt for either a synthetic VR1, like this guy here, although this being a 1030, you guys recommend a 40 weight or higher in these motors. So we would go to maybe their 2050 weight in the VR1, or we'd go to their 1040 weight in the Pro-V, which, which has even more zinc than the VR1. So the Pro-V is a very high zinc formula, but the downside to that is the catalytic converters do not like too much zinc. So in a motor that's going to see daily driving, Valvoline really doesn't recommend the Pro-V or even the VR1. They say this is okay for occasional street use, but you wouldn't want to use it for extended street use. So if this was going into a car that Pete was going to pile a ton of miles on, we would put in Valvoline's uh, street full synthetic oil. But because this is going to go in a car that won't see a lot of street use, I think we'll end up sticking with the VR1 or maybe the Pro-V, depending on whether we have cats in that car or not. So, let's, uh, let's sauce this up with a little of the non-synthetic here. Dropping the cap, let's make it a pour. And because red makes everything faster, it's time to install our Perrin red oil cap. Speaking of red, and doing things right on a high horsepower super engine, or really any turbo turbocharged Subaru engine, you need to get yourself an air oil separator like this one from Perrin. These are vital to keep these motors alive from what I understand, and I'm not an expert, but you guys were explaining to me that it's this, a must. It's a must. And these separate the oil and oil vapors and set it back into the crankcase. And they also separate the what's left of like the water vapors and put that back into the intake track so those get burnt off. Mm -hmm. And this is important for reasons that I don't fully understand. I guess you don't want to draw too much oil into the intake track and that can cause detonation. Yeah, you don't want to be burning the oil uh, right. through the cylinder. So you want that to be drained back into the crankcase. Mm -hmm. But you, there is vapors and there is uh, some unburnt fuel that needs to get drawn back into the intake. Okay. Well, you guys will see more of this and more of this motor in a series to come on a Subaru build that is still a mystery to all of you and maybe a mystery to us too. So thank you very much for watching this uh, Subaru engine build series. Thank you, NV Auto, for all your hard work. We really do appreciate it. And thank you, Valvoline, for making this whole thing possible. Speaking of which, make sure to check out teamvalvoline.com for lots more content. They've got a great amount of technical content on there. They've even got a way for you to sign up to their Team Valvoline program where you can win prizes and get discounts on products. They've got uh, tons of product information there. So if you want detailed specifications of their oil, including zinc content, that's all available there too. Thank you very much, everybody. Looking forward to seeing this thing in a car and on a dyno. Ahoy there.